Hey, my name is Cody with Sonata Consulting. And what is accounting stock anyway? How is that different than physical stock? And how do we get these numbers to match? Well, today we're going to go over and talk about those things. Make sure while we, you see the cool graphics flash across the screen, like and subscribe on this video, and we'll go ahead and get into it. So we have accounting and we have physical stock. Accounting stock is your financial side of the stock tracking, right? It's controlled by bills, by invoices, credit notes, and then you've got your physical stock. And that's going to be your physical inventory adjustments. And that's going to be controlled by your physical transactions, which are going to be your purchase receipts, your packages and shipments, returns, things like that. Accounting stock is going to be the main form of stock tracking that you're going to see in Zoho inventory and in Zoho books. Uh, the two kind of work as like a Siamese twin application of each other. They do have some differences, but the stock tracking and physical and accounting stock tracking, that's all going to be shared across both of them. So with accounting being the main form, I'm going to go over kind of some of those nuances to be aware of, of accounting and physical stock. And in the end, I'll go over a setting that sometimes catches people um, a little off guard as to what's actually happening there. The biggest thing I want to make sure that all of you guys get out of this video is what is actually going on in Zoho inventory to get these numbers to come out, how you're expecting them, and how do these transactions affect each other? So I built a little uh, graphic here. It's going to help us illustrate what is going on in Zoho inventory and what's happening when you conduct these different transactions. First of all, you've got your purchasing side of the system and you've got your sales side of the system. And you'll notice here that it's going to start out on the purchasing side as a purchase order. Pretty straightforward. Most people are going to be familiar with purchase orders. So once you have a purchase order placed to purchase inventory to bring into your system, you're going to either receive or raise a bill against that purchase order. Raising a bill is essentially paying for the purchase order. And what that's going to do is you'll see here, you know, if we follow these little lines, that billing a purchase order is going to increase your accounting stock on hand. And then receiving that purchase order is going to increase your physical stock on hand. Conversely, on the flip side, we have the sales side. There's a little bit of a difference on the sales side and some naming that some people are a little more familiar with and some might not be. So the first thing is you're going to have a sales order. And once the sales order is confirmed, it's going to commit your accounting and your physical stock. And when we hop back over to the uh, image of the item, you'll see what I mean by the commitment piece. With a sales order, once you have invoiced that sales order, your accounting stock on hand is going to decrease. And then once you've packaged and then shipped your sales order or parts of that, you're going to see your physical stock on hand decrease. And with that, we're going to hop back over into inventory and kind of explain what's going on here. The sharp item, you probably noticed there is a stock adjustment um, thing in here as well. That is going to adjust both of them together, but we will cover that a little bit more in detail. So when we hop back over here into Zoho inventory, we're going to come back over here and look at these stock account levels again. When you put in a purchase order, you're not going to see any changes to an individual item. Not yet, at least. You're going to see those changes when you have done something like receiving it or paying for it. However, when you have an outstanding purchase order against a particular item or set of items, you will see a quantity to be received and a quantity to be billed down here. Those That should hopefully make sense if your purchase order is for say 25 and you have yet to receive it you're going to see 25 to be received if you've yet to bill it you're going to see 25 to be billed now once you've received that 25 would let's say you're going to see the physical stock on hand increase by 25 once you have billed that 25 you will see your accounting stock on hand increase by 25 so you'll see this stock on hand number go up by 25 as i mentioned with sales orders, it's going to be a little bit different because it's going to commit the stock for both accounting and for physical. So let's say we put in a, a sales order for 10 items. You're going to see a 10 increase on the committed stock for both sides. And then when we invoice that sales order or the customer's paying it, right? So we're invoicing it. Then we are going to see the accounting committed stock go back down by let's say 10, we pay the whole sales order at once. And so then your committed stock would go back down and your stock on hand is going to decrease as well. 
the available sh for sale is going to be just a, a sum, a formula of the difference between the two. You know, if you notice here, you know, we have 57 stock on hand, 10 are committed, so we've got 47. This is where a lot of people get confused because we have 77 physical stock on hand and 30 committed, but we're still at 47. And so when we see these available for sale levels match, then that's kind of a quick canary in the coal mine that things are going okay. The available for sale stock levels matching isn't going to be a for sure everything is fine. It's mostly just a quick heads up. If those are off, there's likely a few transactions that aren't in order. With that, you'll see that, you know, we have these differences that 77 here means that we have physically 20 more than we do accounting, which would lead to believe that we have 20 to be shipped, as we see here from a sales order, that have likely already been invoiced. The committed stock, you know, as you can see, are 20 different as well. So again, likewise, it's probably a sales order that is still needing to be shipped. Once that ships, then we'd see that committed stock go down by 10, 20 in this case to, you know, total out 10. And these numbers will go back to looking identical in this case, but they can often be a little bit discrepant because you're going to sometimes have a situation where somebody, you know, puts in a sales order and it's paid for right away and you are going to fulfill it in a few days. You could also have the inverse of that and you could have, you know, terms with a certain customer. So they're not going to pay for 30, 60, 90 days, something like that, but it's going to ship out pretty quickly. So those stock on hand and committed stock levels can vary, but as long as you're available for sales match, you're probably pretty good. And then again, you can see, you know, how many you need to ship out down here and how many are remaining to be invoiced. Now, all of that is similar, but down here, you'll see there's another section where you can toggle between your physical and your accounting stock. And this is going to be the same type of information here, but it's going to be broken out into multiple warehouses if you have multi warehousing turned on. If you don't, ignore everything I just said, because it's not going to matter. So, so that is the physical and accounting stock. That is a high level, very basic idea of what's going on with those numbers and what's happening. The reason I mention that is because inventory and books are a little bit more rigid than you're going to see in a lot of the Zoho ecosystem, especially if you're coming from, say, CRM. Um, CRM is going to be very forgiving. And so I point this out because these are going to be kind of your hard, fast rules for making sure that your inventory is working correctly. When you've put in a purchase order and you've received it, but you haven't yet billed it, you're going to see a, a difference or a discrepancy between those numbers. And then likewise, as I mentioned previously, if you've got a sales order, you've shipped out the sales order, but you're waiting you know, 60 days to pay the remaining invoice, you're going to see a little bit of a discrepancy there. However, the numbers should balance out in the end. Now, again, I said, this is kind of the hard and fast rule. There's a few minor changes or a few minor differences to be aware of. I'll go over those really quickly, not into too much depth on this video, but just to be aware of them and when those rules can be broken. Otherwise, it's very important to kind of stick to this and make sure those transactions are happening or your numbers just won't match up and the system will not work. You can try all you want to make it work with, you know, some clever accounting as I like to teach John about, but in the end, you'll, you'll just be constantly chasing these ghosts in the system. So what are some of those differences? Well, we do have a standalone option that does replace the purchase orders, sales orders, and the corresponding transactions. So if I toggle that on, you'll kind of see here. What that means is if we raise a standalone bill, meaning I come into the system and I just create a bill, no purchase order attached to it or anything, it's going to adjust accounting and physical stock at the same time regardless. So that's something to be aware of that that is occurring so that if you happen to raise a standalone bill or you know, you purchase something outside of the system, right? You went to the local store, Amazon, whatever, and purchased it there, you can just come in and create a standalone bill for that to just increase both at the same time. You don't have to deal with the purchase and receipt. Likewise, standalone invoice kind of bypasses a sales order and similar situation. You know, you've sold something, you don't have to go in and create a sales order, you know, package it, ship it, send it out, things like that. Be aware, it's usually best recommended to kind of use these very sparingly unless it makes sense for your environment to do that more frequently. But otherwise, just be aware you can do it, but um, they're not the common way to handle those things. Another one I'm going to show here real quick, just for a quick heads up is these optional things. The optional things kind of, like I said, break the system or modify the system a little bit. So I just high level want to touch on them. So we've got the sales orders and from a sales order, if your product is out of stock, you can have an option to back order that sales order. It creates a kind of modified version of a purchase order 
and there's going to be some different rule handling there. Likewise, there's also a drop shipment option. I know a lot of you are probably wondering about that. Um, the drop shipment is going to be, again, a modified version of a purchase order. The thing to be aware of with that is that when you create a drop ship purchase order, the way to fulfill that drop shipment is to raise a bill against that purchase order or pay for that purchase order. The reason for that is you're not going to receive it. That's the whole point of a drop shipment. It's going to go to the customer. So you're just going to pay that purchase order drop shipment bill, and it's going to handle the remaining balance of those transactions. There's serial numbers and batches as well. We'll go over that a little bit more in a different video. And then transfer orders. Those are going to adjust your accounting and physical stock up and down at the same time. The reason I mentioned earlier, why does the stock adjustment matter? Why is it worth pointing that out? We'll hop back over to inventory again to demonstrate that. Here I'm in inventory. And let's say that I notice physical stock on hand. Um, I go out and I do a count. And let's say it come out to 75 stock on hand. And I've got to make an adjustment. Something broke, got lost, set on fire, whatever. So then we've got to make an inventory adjustment to account for that. So we would come over here and we create an inventory adjustment. We can click here or just simply hit the plus next to it and it'll jump us into an inventory adjustment. The reason why I want to point this out is that, again, I mentioned at the beginning of this video, accounting stock is the true kind of underlying stock bloodline, if you will, of the inventory system. If you notice, we come in here and let's say we put in that item that we were just looking at. It's showing quantity available, 57 pieces. But if we look back at the item itself, 57 was the accounting stock on hand. We needed the physical, right? Because we just did a physical inventory count. So I just wanted to make sure you're aware of that. When you go to do this inventory adjustment, it will adjust both quantities up and down by the same amount. So we could come in here and it's like, well, I counted uh, 75. And so I want this to be 75. But as you'll notice, that's going to increase our system by 18. And we didn't need it to increase by 18. We needed it to, to adjust by negative two. So usually when we do a stock adjustment, it's usually better to just hop over to the quantity adjusted and put your number in there because then you're going to get exactly what you're looking for. It's going to adjust the system down in this case by two, accounting and physical by that same amount. I get a lot of times clients coming and asking, well, my, my balances are off. My stock and my physical don't quite match up. I want to just adjust my physical or just adjust my accounting. How can I do that? Don't. Simple as that. Don't do it. You'll just make things worse. If you absolutely have to, you can kind of defer that from the transaction types I was mentioning of what adjusts what up and down, but then you're going to have some outstanding transactions to kind of hold that balance, if you will. So usually I recommend to people, if there are discrepancies in your system and you can, Go back and find where those are. Adjust those transactions, make things right. If you absolutely can't, books are closed, things like that, then it may be worth you know, making some sort of modified adjustment to make that happen. So I hope this video helped everybody out with understanding what is accounting stock? What is physical stock? What do they mean? How do they work together? And how do I get those numbers to kind of balance or match what I'm looking for? I know a lot of you are still gonna have a lot of questions please reach out in the comments or you know, reach out to us at isdenata.com. We'd love to help answer those questions. It can be a little bit confusing at first, but once you understand that core functionality of Zoho inventory and what's really going on in there, it's gonna make so much more sense and it's gonna be much easier to manage in the end because it's just going to work as long as those transactions are there and exist.